Hello friends, hope you are well. It's that time of the week again, Dirt Report time. Time for Aussie tech news and a slither of international news. Because there is a lot going on in the tech world at the moment. We had WWDC where Apple officially announced they will be using their own silicon in their entry level MacBooks and a whole new slew of operating systems for each device. Even the MacBook got a new OS, big slew. Big sir, big sir. It's early days for iOS 14, but so far Apple users are being welcomed to 2015 with open arms by the Android users. After all, widgets are hella fun. Though the most exciting feature is iOS 14's ability to tell its user if an app is snooping. And dang it, TikTok got caught and got caught looking into your notes folder after all. Apple users would like to wave to Android users from their tower of privacy. Now, no matter what camp you are in, I think we can all agree that boot camp being killed off from Apple's own upcoming silicon is a bad thing. So instead, let's look to some Aussie tech news. We have the ACCC files a lawsuit against Vocus. Health Minister says no to vaping. Russian spies, free Wi-Fi on New South Wales trains, and for some international news, we have the truth behind Apple's breakup with Intel, and new Amazon venture, and Spotify is broadening its horizons. Thank you for joining us. Remember, if you like this video, then tap that like button. And if you would like to see more, please consider subscribing. And this really does support this channel. So that's all we have to do. Let's start with our first topic, and the ACCC is out for blood. While a bit far from a vampire though, the ACCC's fearless leader is who I imagine as Emil Regis, the barber surgeon from the Witcher books, who, spoiler alert, is a vampire, and how I would imagine would look like. You might need to look that one up for reference. I'll move on. So why is the ACCC filing court proceedings against Vocus? For lies and deceit, of course. Uh, to be exact, however, it is against Dodo and iPrimus, which is in fact owned by Vocus. These lies and deceits are of course to do with the NBN speeds. Dodo and iPrimus NBN speed tests over the last few years fall well below many of the other RSPs. In fact, they passed the ninth place, nearly pretty much at the bottom. You see, the speeds they advertised as typical evening speeds were not so typical after all. They instead reported that 75 daily faster speeds that were observed across the entire network the entire Vocus network, not just those two, during the busy period, and as you would imagine, they excluded the slower speeds. Their thought process was absolutely flawless. Your average evening speeds can't be slow. There's no slow speeds to report. Oh boy, were they right. On a side note, I think it's one reason why Telstra is trying to get rid of slow 5 to node plants and customers. If anyone from Vocus is watching, I'll remind you that under the Australian Consumer Law, service providers must not make false or misleading representations that services have certain performance characteristics. Here is what Rod Sims had to say. The ACCC will argue that Dodo and iPrimus used a fundamentally flawed testing methodology developed by Vocus, which was not a reasonable basis for their advertising claims about certain typical evening speeds. It is alleged that the testing methodology determined that typical evening speeds claims by using only the daily 75 faster speeds observed across Vocus entire network in the busy period, excluding slower speeds where a connection was more likely to be impacted by congestion. Consumers need reliable broadband speed information in order to decide which provider to get an NBN service from. How broadband speeds hold up during busy evening periods is a critical issue for many consumers, and all service providers must have a reasonable basis for the broadband speed claims they make. You see, it's bad enough that the NBN rollout was as cheap as the Opal Towers, and both are showing cracks years after. In NBN's case, the RSPs tend to create some white lies to get some short-term wins, and just like the Opal Towers went for the long con with multi-year leases. Vocus certainly missed the mark here, and they will get their just desserts. And as far as PR for the NBN, time to keep your resellers in check, folks. Let me know below if you're with Dota or iPrimus, and if you're getting the speeds as advertised. Let's move on to our next topic. Now, vapes are very techy, and while vaping is lame as hell, its popularity doesn't seem to be bothered by the stench of old strawberry bubble gum wrapped in sweaty musk of a philosopher who gave up when he found out he doesn't know everything and went back to thinking he does know it all. Nonetheless, the industry is worth $14 billion. It's kind of like owning a money printer. But our health minister says it's time for the hip and cool child-friendly smoking alternative to be banned. Say no to vaping. Smokers who now trade vices and vape swear by it. That it has helped them stop smoking, I'm sure it has. Though vaping ain't much better 
than smoking, I expect vape lung to be a medical term in the next decade and a government campaign to tell you how bad it is. Let's be clear, cigarette companies are investing in the next generation of addictive and consumable finger licking goodness. Health Minister Greg Hunt and the Scott Morrison government will ask the Governor General to prohibit imports of e-cigarettes which contain vaporized nicotine and nicotine containing refills for e-cigarettes. One would need a doctor's prescription to bring either of these items into the country. Now, what doctor you might think would prescribe this? Well, one from the 1950s, so go find that one. Opponents of the move say vapors will go back to the dangerous grass-fed alternative instead of this tasty chemical man-made concoction of pure bliss. These opponents include one man who's on the hunt for Mr. Hunt and his bands. Who is this vape niche saviour? Well, it's George Christensen, a member for Dawson, Queensland. On the official political website, www.facebook.com, Christensen said, this was all done without any consultation of the public or many government MPs, including myself. I completely oppose the move, which could result in people returning to cigarettes or purchasing potentially dangerous alternatives on the black market. The black market. Every time I hear that, I think of Fremantle markets during a power cut. Hold on to your wards. Things just get really scary real quick there. In any case, let me know below if a ban on vaping products, especially the e-cigarette which contains nicotine to help smokers, is the right move. These little e-cigarettes that look like the original slick cool puff sticks have the little red light at the end. When, when you take a drag, it lights up and your cinnamon flavored chemtrail, it's truly cyberpunk. And if you want to hear more about cyberpunk, then tune into this week's State of the Beanstalk. Links below. I had to get that plug in somehow. So let's move on to our next topic. Ruskie Spione. And by that I of course mean Russian spies. How did Russian spies make it into the dirt report? Who knows? <laughs> What's this story all about? Well, sit back, tape up your webcams, and listen to me, Tovajish. <laughs> Russian hackers have managed to hack private security cameras in random locations around Australia. You may seem random for the untrained comrade, but they target one of Australia's most secure military installations, an auto electrician in Bondola, New South Wales. But what do you do with such power? What about the responsibility you get? Did Tobey Maguire not teach you anything? Well, our Russian friends did what they do with a hacked camera in another country. Stream it online on a website. That's right. The ABC reports that website streams more than a dozen of Australian businesses, homes, and other sites on this Russian webcam site. I would be keen to see the Google search history of the reporter who found hacked Russian webcams. But the state of New South Wales is not the only one who got hit. Western Australia, Victoria, and places in Queensland did too. What's the danger of this? Well, first of all, knowing if you're home or not. It's pretty helpful if the master criminal figures out where you live and whose camera that is. But what's more fun is that the site allows a naughty user logged in not only to watch, but also control the camera. Now, the group behind the website said it's all for fun and the cameras just hacked themselves. But the ABC reporter who has been searching for Russian webcams writes that someone has told them that their camera got hacked three times even after they set the password to the mother's maiden name. It's widely known that our Internet of Things devices are not particularly secure. Routers and modems are either left with the default password or with an easy to guess word such as password one or Russian webcams tonight one, two, three. I don't know where that came from. All right, next topic, but let's continue with the theme of Internet of Things. And so while connecting to public Wi-Fi is generally a risky business type of deal, nobody cares. And the new New South Wales Transport Department has finally switched on the free Wi-Fi on all 19 stations on the Central Coast Line. Train surfers and paying commuters can now access free station Wi-Fi along the full stretch of rail between Hornsby and Wyong after Telstra completed its long-awaited infrastructure rollout. It's been over four years since the federal government announced the initiative. All this waiting for 60 minutes of free Wi-Fi with no plans to expand it any further? It all seems like a bit of a waste of time to me. Just sounds like a cashy job for Telstra. Let me know below if you still use public Wi-Fi. Is that a thing in today's multi-gig mobile plan economy? The last time I connected to public Wi-Fi spot was in Malaysia. Because, you know, we didn't have a connection then during our stay at an airport. Let's move on to some smaller international news. Amazon is moving into the sports live streaming service. The lucky hooligans in the UK will get to watch the Premier League on Twitch, a very popular video game live streaming platform that recently was directly responsible for the demise of Mixer. 
Microsoft's alternative. Now, Gabby Logan will be back to present its pitch side coverage, and she will be joined by Robert Martinez, Lee Dixon, Clive Tildesley, John Champion, Peter Drury, and then Ali McCoist will provide commentary. Now, due to COVID, we not only get live sport streamed on a video gaming platform, Amazon will actually work with gaming company EA Sports to give viewers the opportunity to watch games with synthetic crowd noises. It is called the Technology Stadium Atmosphere. In fact, you can buy an add-on that spills beer down your back at every goal, all while Amazon Alexas will lock your toilet to simulate these certainly missed long toilet queues. A truly immersive experience. Here is what Alex Green, manager and director of Amazon Prime Sport Europe said. We are extremely passionate about delivering the best experience for our customers while there's following guidelines to ensure the safety of our production team. Beyond this, we have made a number of additions that bring extra choice to our customers in how they watch. From full crowd stadium atmosphere to streaming our prime video fixtures on leading streaming services Twitch. Let me know below if you'll be signing up to a VPN to watch the Twitch streams. Let's jump into our last topic. Intel's woes with Apple started a few generations ago, and an ex-Intel employee spills the beans as to what really happened. A love is tiff or non-performance in the bedroom? Well, it's more on the performance side. This quote below from the former Intel principal engineer Francois Pondale sums it all up perfectly. The quality assurance for Intel Skylake processors was more than a problem. It was abominably bad. Basically, our buddies at Apple became the number one filler of problems in the architecture, basically submitting bug finds. He also added that when your customer starts finding almost as many bugs as you find yourself, you're not leading into the right place. Apple got fed up. It probably started costing them too much in development time to find all these bugs. Then the stars aligned, so it was time to build their own silicon. And now all the stars have aligned to close off this dirt report for the week. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Stay tuned for much more tech content throughout this week. And if your Aussie tech sounds like your jam, then consider subscribing. But if it's just this video that you like, then make sure to let me know by tapping that like button. It really does help a lot. And you know, you can subscribe too, I'm, I'm just saying. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.